And now the, the board of the global program made a decision this year that we want to do something for future students of the program. And so I'm sure a lot of you noticed that on the table, and the little round table on the other side of the room, there are uh, forms that people can fill out to help add to the money that USC and the Annenberg School are putting toward a scholarship that will be named after our own Professor Manuel Castells, who has joined us tonight and was on a five-hour flight back from New York just to be here. And so we're going to give him a round of applause. And, and he will speak in just a minute. And then when we have finished with the endowment for, uh, for that particular uh, scholarship, there will be a second one that we will work on, and it will be named for Professor Anthony Giddens from the London School of Economics. And for anyone who doesn't know the history of the program, the idea of this dual degree program was Tony Giddens' idea. And then after we got the program sort of up and running, we had a wonderful uh, professor who started out working with the program from the London School of Economics who is no longer with us. And so I want everyone to raise a toast to Roger Silverstone, who we honor as a wonderful spirit and uh, just great visionary of this program. And so I want to do that here, here. Thank you. Now, what I want to do is tell you just a couple of things. Besides the fact that this is our 10-year anniversary, we have to let everyone know that that's the 10-year anniversary of the first graduating class. And so the first graduating class uh, came through 10 years ago. That means that uh, Terhi and others uh, of, of us who have been working with this program started doing the work about 13 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, something. But it, it's been a while. And so this is the, the culmination of an absolutely wonderful run. The students in this program are fantastic. Um, you come to us already beautifully trained from all your really excellent universities. And then you go to two wonderful universities. And then when you're finished, you become these most amazing and tonight gorgeous people. <laughs> and so we're, we're absolutely, absolutely thrilled uh, to call you uh, USC and LSE graduates. And so we're, we're, we're very thrilled for that. But the serious part of the evening is I'm going to, to say just a couple of words, then Manuel will say a couple of words, and then I will introduce our Dean Ernie Wilson, who will say a couple of words. But the goal is for everyone to understand that what we know we need to do with this program is to bring more students from Africa and more students from South America those students are underrepresented in a program called Global Communication and Media. And so the idea is we will endow these scholarships so that we will be able to bring students who otherwise wouldn't be here. And we know that it will enrich the experience of the students and the faculty. And we are absolutely thrilled that the very first push on this uh, scholarship idea is going to be named for Manuel Castells. I know a lot of you have had uh, Manuel in class and we have uh, uh, we've got two of Manuel's PhD students here tonight and so one of the things that I wanted to say is that when we started looking for the Wallace Annenberg professor at USC we did not just sort of look broadly. I knew exactly who I wanted. I wanted Manuel to come. I had been reading his work and I heard him give a talk one time and I said he is perfect for this new program that we are building. He was the very first professor who was hired specifically for the global program and he has become the most amazing faculty member, I think, in the department. 
uh, since he arrived. He works amazingly well with students. He writes prolifically, and I'm sure almost everybody in here knows that he most recently won the Norway's Holberg Award, which is for the social sciences the equivalent of the Nobel Prize. And so, We have welcomed Manuel and his wife, Emma, who unfortunately couldn't join us tonight, uh, into uh, the Annenberg USC family and uh, to the LSE family. He will actually be at LSE this fall giving a talk. And so uh, we have created, I think, the most amazing possibilities for our students to study with some of the most amazing students in the world. We always say that this program's motto is distance is nothing with new technology, but location is everything. And the, the environment at the London School of Economics and at the Annenberg School at USC, we hope has been a really wonderful home for the students, and we hope that you're all here as happy as we are for the celebration of this 10-year anniversary. And then I wanted to invite the most uh, esteemed colleague, Manuel Castells. Good evening. I hope that you are having a good time. Uh, and a meaningful time also. Um, I really want to thank, first of all, uh, Patricia, not Patty, Patricia, uh, my dearest friend and colleague, who is true, she is directly responsible for me being at the school and being engaged in this program. Her arguments intellectually, uh, and also uh, institutionally convinced me that uh, I should engage in a new venture in my life uh, in terms of addressing some of the issues that um, I had been concerned with for a long time and that did not have a real, a real um, place in the um, concerns of um, major, more traditional universities like Berkeley or MIT. And 10 years later, well, 10 years later in terms of the program, but almost that, meaning uh, nine years later, for myself, I am now convinced that I made the right decision. <laughs> you know, uh, the I think we could agree, particularly after a, a long and hard master program, that in the last 10, 15 years, there are two processes that are transforming our lives and our world. The transformation of communication, the most important and distinctive activity of the human species, and the process of globalization that has permeated every culture, institution, economic activities, and everything in our lives. So you really have to have a, an incredible vision and a capacity for intellectual and institutional innovation to design 10 years ago a program relating globalization and communication. And that was Patricia Riley and Terry Rantanen working together from the USC and LSC and creating this wonderful program. That was a vision, and this vision materialized. Where's the material? You. You are the material. You have materialized the vision. Uh, because um, ultimately, transformation of society is not institutional. It's not political, it's not economic, it's mental. It's mental. If people change, societies change. And you are this expression of the transformation. Um, because the critical part is your brains. And brains generally, not always, generally are supported by human bodies. And, and so 
you are the material that has been produced by this program. So for this, I think we really should acknowledge the vision, the character, and the organizational and intellectual capacity of Patricia Riley and Terry Rantane. Now you know what these transformations have been about, or if not, I take away the grades. Um, we have shifted from a world dominated by mass communication to a world in which this mass communication has been transformed around the notion of global multimedia business networks and in connection to um, mass self-communication, horizontal networks of communication that have created the condition for cultural and intellectual autonomy for uh, most people in the world. So there is a dramatic shift, dramatic shift. And this dramatic shift is not a matter of gimmicks. It's a matter of reassessing everything from business to politics to culture, to personal lives, to the actual epistemological conception of what means to communicate today. And communication is what really makes us humans. So it is a very deep assessment. And it's not a question of uh, reassessing old theories. It's a matter of creating new theories on the basis of observation, on the basis of a scholarly work, on the basis of a continuous interaction among groups of scholars and particularly young scholars. Yes, all generations depend on young scholars, but this more than ever, because the tectonic shift in communication values and institutions that is taking place can only be fully apprehended by the new generation that you represent. We can help you, guide you, um, legitimize you, but fundamentally we are learning from you. So if you fail, we fail, that's clear. The other thing, globalization. Globalization is the process that has been transforming our lives already for quite a while, but this is a new form of globalization. It's a new form because it's technologically a new form. And technology that not determined, but uh, mediates all kind of new structures, all, all kind of new processes. And therefore, the kind of globalization that we are living through is very different from traditional forms of globalization in history. But the problem of the emphasis on globalization is that by emphasizing what unites the world, we lose the perspective on the specificity of each culture, of each history, of each geography of the world. Because the world is not flat. The world is formed by multiple cultures, ethnics, identities that create a different approach, a different perspective, and a different management of the process of globalization. So we have one globalization and multiple identities, multiple institutional settings, multiple environments, and multiple values. And this in interaction between what unites us and what makes us specific is the heart of the program. And this is the heart of the students of the program. You are diverse. You are, you have your own identities. But you are absolutely aware now of this global world that is interdependent and in which we can damn ourselves or save ourselves together and only together. But it's a starting from the diversity. And it's not simply reducing it to the process of understanding the global, forgetting the local. We are in a local world, we are in a multiple world, and when people look at my biography, tell me, you are global, global intelligence, I say, no, I am multi-local, which is a very different thing. So, this particular characteristic of interacting the transformation of communication with the transformation of globalization while keeping identity and keeping diversity in both processes, this is at the heart of the program. And it's also at the heart of the complementarity between the two major institutions that have engaged in this program. You, you have the privilege, really, 
of benefiting from different intellectual traditions of two institutions that can talk to each other, they cooperate rather than compete, and they are very complementary. Uh, and, and therefore, this diversity that is in you and in the program is also in the institutional setup that makes the program possible, rich, and fruitful toward the future. And this future is today particularly cloudy. And I would like that you take a moment to pause before going into the frenzy night and dancing and enjoy what you deserve because of your hard work. Um, but take a moment to pause about your responsibility. Because we are at a threshold in the world today. We are in our planet in the moment in which an old powerful system that I had characterized as global informational capitalism is crumbling down. This is not the end of capitalism. This is not the catastrophic crisis. I'm simply saying the formula that used to work are not working anymore. Yes, China continues to grow. Yes, Brazil is exploding and happy to be dancing samba where the United States is trying to survive. <laughs> Yet, as uh, my old friend, not current, President Obama um, said today, if Madrid goes badly, so does Milwaukee. Yeah. Not the guy is intelligent, you know. Um, so what I think is that this particular moment, we are seeing the end of a certain world, while at the same time, we have a massive crisis of trust in the world. People in the world at large, all the data there, don't trust those who handle their money and don't trust those who handle their votes. And then what? They trust each other. It's the only thing. How they trust each other? Through communication. And there is such a thing as professional, intellectual, scholarly knowledge about how people can be together and reconstruct society, the economy, the culture on the basis of better communication in the new global context. That's your responsibility, sorry. And now go to dance and then tomorrow you think about it. Thank you. I stand between you and dancing. <laughs> this is a tough position. Uh, but I do want to say a couple of quick things. One, I want to thank uh, Terry and Patty for doing an incredible job for putting together this wonderful uh, weekend, the substantive discussions we've had, as well as the social opportunity. So I would like to give them a round of applause. <laughs> Congratulations. I want to thank also my friend uh, Sonia Livingston for being here, coming all the way from uh, the old country uh, to join us here in the colonies. Um, and I, I really do want to thank all of you who have come from the Lond London School of Economics to help teach us here in the United States, here in Los Angeles, here at the University of Southern California at the Annenberg School to think more broadly and to think more globally so if I may, I would like everyone who is here from the London School of Economics, from the UK, please to stand up and accept our applause, if you would do that. Come on, let, let's see, let's see. Make him stand up. Okay, good. Thank you. And as, as, as we say in Los Angeles, I want to say muchas gracias. Uh, thanks for, for, for sharing your ideas and your visions. Um, I certainly want to uh, congratulate Manuel Castells. Uh, we know him, others know him as a great intellect, a great scholar, etc. But those of us who have been privileged to be in the global program 
also know him as a great colleague and as a great teacher. And I think nothing could be more appropriate than to naming a scholarship after Manuel Castell. So Manuel, thank you for all the good work that you do, and thank you for your commitment to this program. Thank you so much. And I have one more thing that I'd like to say. Um, my, my buddy uh, Craig Calhoun and I stayed out probably a little bit too late last night. <laughs> Um, he's on his way to Turkey, but he got to sleep on the airplane. Um, but one of the things we talked about last night for several hours is the last 10 years have been really great with this program. So here's the interesting question, folks. What do we do for the next 10 years? How do we make it an even better program? How do we link the teaching with the research, with the service, that all of us are committed to. So I would simply say, uh, on behalf of myself and, and my wife who is here, or the, other, the real Professor Wilson, um, I'm just the bureaucrat, um, while you are boogieing on the floor tonight, and when you go back to the UK, let us think about a vision, creating a vision for what the next 10 years will look like. Will it be more global and what will that mean? Perhaps more people from Africa, more people from other parts of the world. Will it involve not only students, but joint research projects? Will it involve joint service projects that we would do? The horizon is infinite and filled with possibilities. As Manuel Castells has just said, the old world is collapsing and it's creating new spaces for ethical engagement and intellectual engagement and professional engagement. And I think all of us in this room have both the capacity and, as Manuel said, the ethical responsibility to imagine ways in which these new spaces can be filled with new ways of thinking that are more equitable, that are more ethical, that are more open than what we have seen over the past 10 years. So my charge to you is let's imagine a future in which this wonderful, wonderful relationship can become even more robust. We can even have more conversations, and we can have even greater parties in 10 years. So again, welcome to LA, and we'll be in touch. And thank you so very much. Thank you very much.